Welcome everybody to another edition of the Checkered Flag. I want to start on a bit of a somber moment tonight. Um, not the way I really wanted to kick off the Checkered Flag, but uh, we lost our beloved Ronnie D. Kaiser this afternoon. His battle with his tumor is now over and he's no longer in suffering. Um, I wanted to say from all of us to the Checkered Flag, uh, our hearts and prayers, our deepest thoughts are with the D. Kaiser family. Second that. Yeah. So we're going to start out. So welcome everybody. A new edition of the Checkered Flag. We've got a great show planned tonight. I want to give a big shout out to V&H Fresh Produce this past weekend. They donated $2,500 for the new scoreboard at Dixon. Big hats off to Vince Rosa. On February 15th, they're going to be unveiling the four of the new drivers. The February 15th, is that happening at Dixon Speedway? Where are you doing Dixon that? At Dixon Speedway, so Saturday night. Saturday night. 15th. First, you're going to hear it first at Dixon Speedway on the 15th of February. Really exciting. Yep. Also, later tonight, we're going to talk about the Chili Bowl. Later tonight, we're going to have um, uh, Chase Johnson call in. That's going to be pretty exciting. Yep. Before so some Chili SWR Bowl drivers hit the dirt track. The team also did something very unique this past weekend. They got to go to a, a hospital to see some sick kids. And we're going to show a video of that right now. All right. Before some Chili Bowl drivers hit the dirt track tonight at the River Spirit Expo Center, several of them visited the Children's Hospital at St. Francis this morning. Dave Davis was there as they helped brighten the kids' day. Some Chili Bowl drivers got away from the dirt track this morning to spread a little cheer to little kids like Michaela Howell. What's your favorite thing that you got today? The shirt with the autographs. It's going to give you, you're going to have plenty of time to color. You're going to color the whole thing? Mm-hmm. About a half dozen race car drivers from all different motorsports visited several kids at the Children's Hospital at St. Francis. They took pictures, signed autographs, and they handed out t-shirts and sock animals, which you can color with markers. Al Sider has helped organize events like this for years. Waiting for a heart transplant himself, he knows what it's like waiting in a hospital bed. I just really believe the, in the family values in motorsports and what it does for kids, especially a lot of kids that can't physically run or do a lot of that stuff. And it means a lot to the drivers. Blake Hahn from Sapalpa was supposed to race in the Chili Bowl but broke his elbow on Sunday. This helped cheer him up too. Their eyes light up when we walk in. They're really excited to see us all and especially when they, the drivers give them their autograph cards. They love it. And little Michaela Howell can speak for all the kids who now have goodies to play with. It was nice. It was good. That about sums it up. Dave Davis, News on 6. Right on. There, there you see, you saw, who do you recognize in that video? Our Chase buddy, Johnson. Chase Johnson. Yeah, that was yeah. at the local St. Francis Hospital that their CWR team trio went to go visit the hospital before the races. Friend of the show, Chase Johnson. He'll yes, and we're going to hear from him later tonight. Well, I want to thank our sponsors, MantacorpUSA.com and Manticorp Tax and Accounting. Check out their website, MantacorpUSA.com. Don't get frazzled with your taxes. Manticorp can help. They're located right here, actually next to this, uh, next to our studio at 9800, 9800 Highway 53 in Lower Lake. Also, I want to thank Yaya's Coffee House in the Burns Valley Mall near the grocery outlet. So big thanks to Yaya's Coffee House. Go in and grab something nice and hot to drink or something cold there. Um, big thanks to Yaya's Coffee House and, of course, Always Towing. I don't appreciate them, but Always Towing located in Lower Lake. Never get stranded on the side of the road. 707-995-5000 for always towing. No reason to ever get stranded on the side of the road. We're waiting to hear from our guest in a little bit, Ryan Robinson. So actually, if we can go go to... Uh, let's get to it. Yeah, let's get to it. Hopefully we'll hear from Ryan Robinson here. Well, he's about a minute out from calling us. So. Okay. Um, well, before we're waiting for him to call in real quick, I wanted to... You were telling me you might have a potential buyer, if you don't mind uh, mentioning that on the... Somebody well, we're going to have as a guest, or is that too something you don't really want to talk about on TV yet? Nope, 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 nope. Right, okay. But we do have a potential buyer for the right. old 600, so. Right. No, I want to Stay ask, tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. But also, too, um, you also, uh, so how did you feel? Uh, boy, you, you committed all the way up to second for both races yes, we this did. past weekend. Yes, we did. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about this in the, um, in the recap, um, during our recap time. But, uh, and, oh. There we go. Oh. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Ryan, how are you? I'm good. Oh, check this, check this out. I want to, I want to intro we. We got Ryan Robinson, number one outlaw kart racer, thirteen wins, including a perpetual trophy dashes, twenty wins at Cycleland Speedway. Boy, the kids in it all. Thanks for being on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for the invite. 
Hey, no problem. So I want to start with the interview. Take us back to the beginning of your career and how all of this wonderful uh, racing kicked off for you. Well, uh, racing has always been my family's blood. Uh, my grandpa used to build uh, motors for dragsters. Mm -hmm. My dad used to race all over in sprint cars. So at uh, three, I got my first outlaw <laughs> car from Santa Claus. Oh, there you go. At three years old from Santa Claus. I love it. Right on. Yeah. I wonder how he got that down the chimney, huh? <laughs> um, anyways, you have a name, uh, you've got a name called uh, Will Feed. Uh, tell us about it. Do you still use that name? Or is that something you had before? Yeah, I still use it a little bit. It's, um, it actually came from, my dad was in a uh, John Boy shop at Loomis, and he was using a power feed on a lathe, and he kind of overused it, oh. and it broke. Oh. Everybody started calling him Power Feed. Oh, so then they, <laughs> so, and they called you Little Feed. Gotcha. Right. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So, um, were you able to get out to Tulsa? Yeah. Actually, Tulsa was super fun. It was a great experience for me in, in a micro. Fantastic. How'd you guys finish? So, we, um, we finished third in the Yellow Rocky main. They only took two. Wow. And, um, in the uh, A-class wing main. The throttle stuff, so it, oh. uh, it burnt up the clutch. Hate when that happens. Yeah. But you were all right. You didn't crash. No, I didn't. I just had to pull off. Right. So uh, it was the same car as the non-wing car, so I didn't get to race that one. Gotcha. Yeah, that was. Uh, so how was the overall experience for you there with the 600, with the just being around the uh, Chili Bowl, and how was that overall experience? Yeah, this is atmosphere is awesome to be around. Right. I think it's great that they added the 600 uh, 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 Micro Series. Is this the first year they did that? No, no, it's been no? 20 okay, plus years. Okay, it's been 20 plus years? years? Yeah, okay, yeah. wow, that's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So I want to get yeah. uh, uh, get on to uh, your fan, the family part of racing. Now, Jody Robinson, your sister, races also. Yeah, she does. Tell us about her. Yes. Yeah, she's a, she's a great driver. Um, I try to, we, we both push each other a whole bunch, and uh, I try to give her as much advice as possible. Right on. You actually kind of, um, that was going to be my, my next question, is uh, do you help her out with, with pointers? And, and what kind of, what type of advice do you give her before uh, she heads out onto the track? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of hard giving her advice right before she goes out on the track and all like that. So I'm always over at Avery's pit. <laughs> <laughs> I understand Right, that. right. Yep. Anytime I can, I just go up there and tell her good luck and uh, where I think the track's up. Yep. Right. That's great stuff. Right. So what kind of, so what kind of a, uh, what are your cars that you're primarily racing? Uh, I primarily race open, intermediate, and open at Cycle End. Okay. And then I hit a, and then this year I just started the uh, micros. Oh, sweet, sweet. So back on the back on the open, the, the intermediates. Um, are those now? I noticed that when we go to go to different tracks. Uh, they're, they're 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 classified as something else. Are the intermediates included? Are aren't they classified as a five hundred? Yeah, the open and intermediates are and open are both five hundreds. Okay. Uh, Cycl Cycling is the only track with an open and intermediate class, so I mainly just run open at other tracks. Gotcha. Right. right. Are you running? So are are you uh, with your six hundred? Have you run ran at non wing yet? Yeah, I actually that was the one I was locked in the A main for Tulsa. I was starting the fourteenth. Gotcha. Okay, so um, are you you think you're going to try to go back next year to Tulsa? I hope so. Um, I hope to get a couple of races. I don't really have a ride yet, uh, but like Plaza Park on Friday nights would be really cool to hit. Absolutely. And then we run them at Dixon every couple of weeks, and then they also run at Delta. Um, and we're supposed to run three times this year at Petaluma as well with the 600 micros. Maybe you can get yeah. out to that. And That's Dixon. Dixon would be pretty cool too. I know this race coming up. Yep, February fifteenth. Yes, I would love to see you out there. I'm sure they would extend love to extend their invite too. Uh, come on out to Dixon on the fifteenth, man. Yep. Yeah. The B and H. You heard me talking about the top of the hour. The B and H Fresh uh, Racing Team is going to be unveiled on the fifteenth. What'd you say? The B and H Fresh Produce uh, team uh, team is going to be unveiled on the fifteenth. Yeah, they so got that's pretty four cars. They got four cars year. coming this year. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, 
Dolan, I want to go over some of the memorable moments in your uh, racing history. Now, back in 2006, you had your first aiming win. win. Where did that happen at? Um, I think that was, I'm not sure. That was Red Bluff? I, I don't re really remember much from back <laughs> then. All I remember is playing with the hot wheels in the dirt. <laughs> that, that, I, I, you remember the important I, stuff. The important stuff. And that's actually funny that he mentioned that because I see that a lot with these kids that race their beginner box. You know, you see them out there playing in the dirt and got the little dirt on their faces. They're playing with the Hot Wheels. But when they get behind the wheel of their car, they're totally different little people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, us big people get different when we strap a helmet on, too. Yeah, yeah, you, you guys do. Um, so yeah, my, uh, I remember winning my uh, first two West Coast National Eagles, though. That was super fun. It was super exciting for me. All right. How yeah. long ago was that? How long ago was that, that Ryan? That was about 2006. Wow. 2007. Right. Okay. So there's a now that I think you remember. I won them two years in a row in a beginner box stock. Gotcha. Right on, and the national uh, 2007. You're not you're not you won national beginner box stock champion in 2007. Tell us about that one. Yeah, that was super cool. That was the uh, Red Luck Eagle. That's very impressive. Yeah, that's a really really imp that's very impressive, man. And I want to ask you about your beginner box perpet. Uh, let, can you tell maybe those who don't know what the perpetual trophy is? You can tell us about the perpetual trophy because you won that back in 2008. Um, at Red Bluff, right? Yes. 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 Correct. That's a uh, it's a big race in the middle of the year, um, and you just get it's about a six foot tall trophy, and every everybody who wins it gets their name put on it, and you can only keep it for a year. Gotcha. That's why they call it perpetual. That's why it's perpetual because it, 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 it makes a lot of rounds and moves very neat. Around. So you were about four foot when you won that six foot trophy, right? Yeah, I was <laughs> short on the trophy. Yeah, that trophy was taller than you. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah. That's pretty neat. So what would you, if you had to give a, a young racer advice, what's the first thing you'd tell them? Um, just go for everything. I mean, on the gas. Don't be afraid of anything. That's wonderful advice, man. Yeah. I second that. Go fast, turn left, repeat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. So what are your plans? So what are your plans for this season? Well, this I hope um, I'm going to stay with Abrus and uh, hopefully uh, run side plan this whole season with the open and open the immediate division, and hopefully get top three in the open division and win a couple races and uh, keep my streak going in the OI class, and then possibly hit a couple Dixon races. And like yeah. I said, it'd be really cool to race micros. On Friday nights at Plaza Park. Sounds um, like great goals, man. Yeah, yeah, sounds like you got some got some great goals. Yep, keep pushing. You make it happen. So that's the Abreu Vineyard sponsorship you're after. Yeah, um, I'm running with them right now. Fantastic. Some guys uh, that were that were my sponsor for Tulsa. Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. That's a great team to be associated with, man. Congratulations. Right. Yeah, it is. So what? So um, what do you think that Tulsa um, has brought to the racing this year? Say that again. Uh, what do you think Tulsa this year has has really brought to the racing teams this year? Your experience. At Your Tulsa. experience. You know what? What have they? What do you think they they have brought to the racing team to the racing teams this year? I think it, um, they just kind of brought their name out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Did you get Did you get a chance to meet Kyle Larson over there when you were there? Some of the bigger I know names. I've seen him, he didn't come, but I've I've seen him a lot before. Me and him kind of kind of talked a little bit. All right. Yeah, he's not a he's not a he's not a big talker though, is he? He's kind of shy. <laughs> he's a great guy. Yeah. My uh my dad actually got him his first sprint car ride. With oh really? Heroes. Oh wow. Gotcha. So you guys yeah. have some good history. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about some of your achievements. There's a 2010 Hot Rod Driver of the Year in the 250 class at Cycleland Speedway. That was really cool. Cycleland in the 250 and 500 classes is really stiff competition, and just run up front there is a huge deal. If you can run up front there, you can run up front in a lot of places. Absolutely. Right on. So uh, what about 
tell us about some of your some of your latest accomplishments. Uh, your last year, you were rookie of the year, and uh, where was that? At? How did you score that? Um, I got rookie of the year in the uh, OI division this year, or er, rookie of the year in the OI division last year. So I was pretty cool, and I finished second in points, and then second in the 250 division. Right on, and then you actually in uh, an outlaw. You actually race an outlaw. You race a non-wing outlaw too, don't you? Uh, no, I just I just practice a little bit with it at a uh, Abrams track. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, they got the little track in the vineyard there, right? Yeah, yeah, a little a little practice track they have there. Right on. So tell us about your tell us about your sponsors and. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, hear about the sponsors and anybody you'd like to thank. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Avery Finiers, Dave Rico, and the whole crew. They've been an awesome help this year. Uh, Stout Hoffer Construction, Grandpa George Motors, Orville Cycles has been always really cool to us. PT Shogs really helped us on our uh, trip to Tulsa. There you go. Jimmy Elledge, QRC, and the whole QRC family. All my fam family and friends. And uh, Butler Built. Butler Built actually sponsored me a couple seats. Oh, there you wow. go. Very nice. Right on. Right on. Well, hey, thank you so much for being on the show with us, man. Uh, anything else you'd like to say or anybody you'd like to thank before we let you go? No, I think that's it. All right. Well, well we're, we're, okay. real quick, before we let you go, where are you? Where, where can we see you race next? Um, I'll probably hit, uh, I'm not sure really yet, maybe Ukiah uh, this coming weekend. All right. Okay, well, yeah, hopefully we'll see you there. Yeah, Ukiah yeah. is running this weekend on the 25th. Right. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me. All right, no problem, we'll see man. See you in the dirt. Yeah, we'll see you in the dirt. All right. All right. Bye, Bye Ryan. Right on, Les. Great having uh, hearing from Ryan Robinson. In just a couple minutes here, we're going to hear from Sean Jackson of Atwater Carts, and I wanted to kind of do a little intro with Sean Jackson before we get him on. Sure. Where are we about? We're about two minutes away, and um, Sean Jackson, I think, was it 2012? He opened up the uh, open up over there. Yeah. Um, have you? Did you get a chance to race down there at all, or do anything? No, I didn't. Um, I was in the process of moving out of the flat cart at that time. Uh, but I do know Sean. And I have known him for a long time, so I'm sure that it's a quality program. Yeah, yeah, it is. And like I said, you know, he's, he's trying to do a lot for the kids. He's going to run run the track, I believe, um, uh, for this year. And we'll talk to him about that, of course. He's going to run it one, about once a month. Yeah. Say so, yeah, right. They that have a schedule year. out, actually. Right. 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 Okay, so while we're waiting for the next caller to call in, let our uh, wonderful tech know, maybe we, we can go ahead and play play that first video that's a couple of minutes. That first video, now the first video is of Cycleway, of uh, catching uh, Ryan Robinson at Cycleland. Oh, great. On, on the 5th, June 5th, 2013, so in action on Cycleland there. We'll show that video, and we should be right back with our second guest after this.
was the Ryan Robinson win from June 5th, 2013. Very and on the exciting. phone right now, we have a Sean Jackson of Atwater Cards. Atwater, Sean, am I correct? It debuted in 2012. Is that when you kind of kicked things off or you took things over out there? Actually, uh, last year, the beginning of last year. Yeah, just this last, last year, 2013. And on the phone right now, we have the all-famous Sean Jackson. Thanks for being with us, man. This is our, your uh, third hey, time on the show with us, I believe. Love being here. Yeah, yeah, I think it's your third time on the show. So last year we had you on, we, we talked about, uh, uh, about um, your, you know, what you had going out there, you know, your racing and what you had kicking off. Now this year, you're going to be doing something going to be doing the same things, but I understand you also got the paved track as well. Yeah, I'm also now taking care of uh, the sprint track, and we also have an oh, right on. We'll, we'll be running again. We'll be running this year. It ran back in the late 90s and stuff, and it was a pretty big hit, so we're going to bring it back out. Right on. Are you going to be now? Are, are you going to be running um, uh, flat track motorcycles this year? We've got a huge, we've got a huge interest in flat track motorcycles. What we're going to do is we're going to run a Saturday program. It's going to be Saturday morning. We're going to run the carts and everything, and also the flat track motorcycles all day long. Wow! Between everything. So uh, all day long you're going to run those between morning. everything. That's great. That's great. Um, you're also now. You're also. You talked about the. Uh, you got to pave the oval right now. Or are you doing that too, or? Yeah, what we're going to do is, is on that same weekend, on the Sunday, we're going to go ahead and run our sprint cart, our sprint track, okay, which consists of the asphalt uh, carts. But we're also on that day, too, we're also going to include our asphalt oval in with that program. So one day will be dirt, one day will be asphalt, all on the same weekend. Wow. Fantastic that idea. Sounds, that sounds exciting. Very fantastic idea. And I'll, also, um, I look at your schedule. It looks like for right now you're going to be running once a month. Is that correct? Once a, once a month. My grandkids and I are trying to do a lot of racing this year. Last year we ran dirt show one week. We ran the asphalt show the next week, and it ended up being <laughs> that we were at Atwater every every day of the, I mean every week of the month. Sure. Yeah. Um, yes. This year, this year we're going to do some travel. We're going to come up to Dixon. We're going to go to some other places. Uh, both and the. I have my granddaughter who's also going to do some road racing this year in a Formula Mazda. And so. Oh, right on. Well, for those of you who are just tuning in and uh, have never met Sean Jackson before, tell us about your kids that race. Tell us about your the grandkids that race. Oh, well, they're just my spoiled grandkids. They, they said they <laughs> want to be sprint car racers, and I have one that wants to go on to do like the be towing the 24 hours and stuff, my granddaughter and stuff. Right. She sit out there for eight hours a day. <laughs> Right. She gets that from her dad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, as I recall, you used to uh, you used to get some seat time your own self. Oh uh, yeah, I was never as fast as I wanted to be, but I sure kept doing it for long enough. That <laughs> sounds uh, like a lot of us. You probably remind, remember me from Baylands and stuff, and my sprint cars and stuff. Yep. Before that, I did motorcycles. Uh, I started off in flat track motorcycles. Went on to road race motorcycles, went on to cars, went into sprint cars, retired about 2005. And now you're a promoter and a car owner. So I guess you never really, I guess you never fully, really fully retired from racing. <laughs> you find your way back I in somehow. I think there is retirement from racing. I think once it gets in your blood, it's there for good. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah, exactly. Now, are you going to be trying to run, or are you going to be trying to run or running some 600s? Um, you know, we're pushing the dirt track out this year. It yeah. will be bigger this year. In right. fact, they even started cutting on it some more today. That's why I asked you. I know you're. I, I know you, you. You were going. To, I know you were uh, going to uh, going to expand it. So. Yeah, I was going to do it myself and stuff. I ran into some problems with some arthritis in my hands, and I can't even drive a car right now. Oh. Right. I've got right. a lot of good help, and I've got a lot of good followers, which is great. And, yes. Uh, right. I mean, we all know that nobody can do any of this stuff on their own without help. I've got like Ralph Construction, which helps me a great deal. Gary Crawford and stuff has been helping me. Yeah. There's been loads of people that have just been throwing things in just to make things a little bit nicer out there to get them done. Right, uh, right. It's coming along really well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I know you're making... We're hoping that we'll be able to fit the 600s in, but well, what we are going to do is we're going to invite... We invited the 250s and stuff last year to run our asphalt course and stuff, and we're going to invite the 600s and stuff to run the asphalt track, the asphalt wow. oval. If anybody's ever run a winged sprint car on asphalt, 
they'll be wanting to get on this thing with their 600. Is that, so I, can I guess they that. ask possible that they do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they run on asphalt back east. I'm yeah. asking, un I'm asking, uh, asking uneducated questions because I'm new to the racing business. <laughs> I've only been an announcer for three years uh, with this, so I, that, that's pretty exciting. I didn't know that they, they, should, they can get them on asphalt also. That would be exciting. Make yes. sure you let us know yes. and we'll help get the word out there. Yes, absolutely. That's what, that's what the checkered flag is for. And you, no, you're also the schedule you're working on. You're also working on on uh, schedule, so you're so you're not conflicting with other tracks like Dixon, Ukiah, and you're you're really trying to make things work as far as the schedule's concerned, and working and working together with those tracks too as well, right? Oh yeah, I mean Jeremy and Elliot, if you couldn't ask for better people, and uh, you know it's like they're like brothers to me, you know, and we're gonna. I really want to take the kids up there and have them run up there and stuff. Also, the people down in Bakersfield, they're working side by side with us, wanting to run, you know, back and forth so everybody can run together. I think a lot of times promoters make a big mistake of not collectively working with everybody else and all they right. do is hurt the sport instead of helping it when right. they could be running so that everybody could run any place they wanted to on a given week they wanted to run rather than take away from another show. I yeah, like, exactly. I, I like Daryl Waltrip's term in this case, co-opetition. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, uh, I don't know. Right. Yeah, so, I, I'm with you there. I, I wish that every track would do the way that you guys are doing, and, and Dixon, and Ukiah, and Lakeport. If, as long as we all work together, then there's plenty of racing for everybody. We, we can run every weekend, and you promoters might even get some sleep sometime. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I mean, my whole thing with promotion is, is I love this sport. It's what allowed me to do the things that I was able to do in my life. It gave me a worth ethic, which I think is yes, worth sir. having for anybody. In order yes, to race exactly. the car, you got to work. you got to work hard, and you got to be willing to work all the time. Right, and, right. Uh, it, 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 I think it's a great thing to share with your family and friends. Here, here. Exactly. And, and you know, you know I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bold here. I know Sean... I know the first year was a little rocky, and but you know the one reason I, I definitely I definitely willing to grow with you is because of the heart you have. I remember I remember when we were passing when he was passing out the uh, trophies, and I saw the tears in his eyes, and you know the, just the love he has. I mean, I really saw a, a true genuine, and, and you know, and that's why you know like anything, it takes time for things to grow. I mean, look where we started with the checkered flag. You know, we were <laughs> we were on a on an internet cat on an internet podcast. Not really podcast. We were internet where we were done all by phones. Wow. So yeah, it was um, it was blog talk, blog, and it just takes time for things to grow. And and I uh, really see you guys are doing some good things there in Atwater. And um, hope if, if my time permits, I would love to come out there and, and uh, announce and be a part of it and give that a second shot. Oh, we'd love that. Yeah. Right. Right on. So tell us about uh, Tom Dash Memorial Speedway. There was a and, and no last time we had we never really covered that and uh, who Tom Dash was. Tom Dash was, uh, his, I believe he was police chief. Not, I, I mean, I know he was police chief, but I believe he was also a one-time mayor. He was right. really into the kids and doing things for kids. You know, in fact, he helped join to make the Powell Association there in Atwater. You know, he's the one that started the cadet program yeah. in Atwater. He's the one that got involved in the car track to build it so the kids had some place to go. You know, he mixed it up with a BMX track and stuff. And when he passed away, they memorialized the track after him. Right, right. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you for keeping that traditional. Yeah, life. thank you so much. And of course, uh, of course, um, at the, um, next to the app, your sponsors. Now you're uh, being taken care of by the Atwater Police Activities League this year. Is that correct? Well, actually, what happened was is uh, the PAL Association, what it is, is it's for kids. They're through the Police Activities League. What, right. what I started, and actually Jerry O'Hagan, which you guys all know, and sure. yes, yes. to do with this too. We actually have a group out there that we're teaching them how to run carts. We're talking kids that would never have a chance to sit in a cart, never have a chance to even see a cart, probably, except for on TV or watch one go by. We right. normally have six to ten kids come out every second and fourth uh, Saturday. We teach them all the rules as far as the flags, the safety. We're actually tearing cars apart with them. We're powder coating them, having them built, and we're doing this all together. 
Wow. We're actually going to have a group of these kids racing before the end of the year. Wow. That's a fantastic That's cause. That is, that is a fantastic cause. That's I not am, something I'm you see every day. I'm yes. very proud of you, brother. Right. If, uh, I mean, this sport, this sport kept me out of trouble, kept me going, kept me working. I believe if I can pass that on to one, I'd be paying back all the people that ever helped me. Right. Here, here. Right on. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. I, told, I know the, poor, the sports kept me busy as an announcer doing this, so I know, how it, I, I know how easy it is to get addicted to this sport. And it's a wonderful, wonderful sport. I love it. And, and the kids, and, you know, I, I enjoy being a part of the kids' lives, too. It's just an awesome thing. And, um, of course, uh, Sean, it, it's uh, been great knowing you, and it's great seeing you, what you're doing for the kids as well. If, uh, if somebody was wanting to help with that cause that you oh. were just talking about, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, we actually have a Facebook page. It's called Atwater Pal. Okay. Atwater P A L. Join us on there, or you know, you can get a hold of me on Facebook through the Atwater the Car Club. Either the dirt or the asphalt. Anybody wanted to help, we could use all the help we got. We got a bunch of donations of carts and stuff to start this thing off and stuff. Wow. Not a bunch. We've got like three of them. But we've got a mess of people involved, and we're growing every day with it, and it's been a lot of fun. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Thanks hey. for all that hard work. Oh, shoot. I, I love it. It's no work at all. <laughs> yeah. Sean, I think that, I, I said this before, I think the, the biggest the biggest payoff and, and it's, this is worth more, all the more worth more worth all the money in the world that you can pay me as an announcer and to see those kids and see them happy, that, that, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest payoff. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's not only the kids, too. You know, it's like one of my favorite times about walking around that racetrack is around lunchtime. Right. I make a habit of walking right down the center of the thing because I love seeing all the families, you know, together with all their friends and everything else. It's just a good thing. Sure is. I right. second that. It's just a good thing, and I think that's what I enjoy the most of it, you know, and, uh, you know, to watch the kids and what we what they do, we had one of our rookies actually go to Tulsa in the 600 class and the restricted class. Wow. He won his heat race, finished third in his qualifying event, went straight for the main, and then had a flat tire. Back uh. in the last year, he was barely even in a car except for once <laughs> or twice, and that was Dennis Rolfe's boy. Right, but, right. I mean, it was amazing. It had Nathan Rolfe. It was amazing. Fantastic. Yes. It was great to watch. I figured this way when I'm 80 years old, I get to watch all these kids go jamming around all over the place. <laughs> not to all the other. Right, right. Well, hey, Sean, we got to let, as much as I love to keep talking to you, man, we got to get to our recap. Um, uh, one, we'll give you a, one last chance to shout out uh, where they can go, where they can, what website and where they can go to find uh, to find all the information about your uh, upcoming races. Uh, the website is tough, which is probably the best place to go, and we'll take them anywhere. There's Facebook links on it and everything else okay. is at watercarclub.com. Okay, all right. Sean, Feel thank you. To bring me up, link to me, anything, anything I can help anybody with, please ask and give me a call, I'd love to. That's Sweet. at watercarclub with a K. Yes, dot com. Dot com. Yes. Sean, thank you so much. It's always great to hear from you. Keep up the good work. Yes, absolutely. Oh, thanks for having me. We'll have you on again soon. Thank oh, you. yes, and I look, for, I look forward to working with you in 2014, my friend. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. you take All right. Bye-bye. All right. One, one remarkable person that's in things, when they're trying to get things kicked off in the racing business. Like I said, you know, we had a, I had a, we had a little bit of a rocky start, and we were trying things out. I went out there, and it didn't work out so well as, as to start with, uh, and for announcing. And um, you know, I just, I, I, I really saw the heart that he had, yeah. and you know, when he. we. You know, he saw me at Dixon and we talked and I decided, you know what, I'm going to give it a second shot because this man really is trying to do things. It's, it really is trying to get things worked out over there. So it sounds like they are with, with, with the things that they're adding and, and what they're doing for the kids. So, yep, it's beautiful to see that. Yeah, it is. Well, let's get to the My Laps recap. Of course, I want to thank Action Captured Images for providing us with the photos. Yeah. You can see Action Captured Images, AC dash images.net dave warden and of course you guys name chris right yep yeah chris chris actually goes goes to other goes to lake port in ukiah and of course uh dave is all over the place and um check him out at ac dash images.net 
Action Captures Images is also on Facebook. Yep. So get a very unique up close and personal perspective through these photos. Let's get with the, I'm uh, gonna go with the dashes in Maine. John Bordenavi. Wow, what a night he had. Yeah. He pulled a 10-5-4-9. John Bordenavi pulled a 10 to 10 5 4, 9. I believe it was a record. Was he yeah. the one that broke, he broke every record that night, didn't he? Was that, he's the one that broke the records? Yes. Yes, broke, broke every record last night. Went for what, went for what, went for a clean sweep. Won the uh, main event, also won in the 600 multi um, trophy dash as well. Yes, he did. Yeah, Paul Alatore came in second and third. Sean Watts, Shane Watts in fourth. Again, we didn't have a whole lot of cars this past weekend. It was a great night. We had, yes, I had a lot was. of fun. And like I said, you know, I know that uh, I, I think uh, just coming off of Tulsa is probably why the car count the way it was. And, you know, it, it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. Um, Let's get to the three quarters. The track was super fast. Sir. Oh, it was super fast yes. and full intense. Let's get to the Fun three. To drive. Let's get to the three quarters now. Dylan Horsley. So yeah. Dylan, yep. There's a picture. Dylan. Dylan Horsley took the win, and the number seventeen, in number two, Colton Holzman. Number three, Hunter Griffin and Jacob Tuttle. The next one, the three back on the three quarters. Dylan Horsley took the win again and broke some records. And also broke some records. Yes. And that was at lap number. That was a fast time, lap number six with his 10, 9, 8, 10, 9, 8, 5. Again, the track was with a restrictor plate also. Yeah. That's, that, that was amazing. With Stupid a fast. <laughs> Stupid fast with a restrictor yeah. plate. Nate, Nathan Rolf, we just talked about Rolf. Nathan Rolf came in yep. second, yep. came in, uh, uh, no, third. Okay, well, Holzman came in second. Hunter Griffin in fourth and fifth, Jacob Tuttle. Now the wingless, the wingless, the wingless dash. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. No, um, yes, we right afterward, we're going to show. We're going to show. But right after, we're, we're going to show that uh, we're going to have crash of the week. Crash that'll of be, the week. That'll be after. So we'll, uh, after this, we'll talk about that. Okay. Colton Jones took the win for the main event. There is there Colton Jones in the in the in the wing list. You came in second. Yes, Dave? I did. And that yes, was did. yeah, Dave. We have the picture up there. I think of, of Dave Mitchell. Do we? We can yeah, slap up. There. I think we do have a picture. Yeah, there yeah, it is. Are. Dave. Dave Mitchell. Yeah. Not. Hey, man. You know what? Second is not in second. A isn't bad, man. Derek yeah. Overcamp helped us out immensely with the setup. Yes, and I thank you, Derek. Thank you. And the car was running really quick that night too. I noticed you were running pretty quick also. Yep. Dave Mitchell came in second. Tanner Bull in third and fourth. And Mike Saber, Eddie Mullins in fifth, and Jamie Beatty in well, I got it in sixth. Yes, she did. Dwarf. Yes. The dwarf cars were pretty awesome too. Danny Wagner. Let's get Danny Wagner's photo up there. Danny Wagner in the dwarf there cars he took the win. There he is. Uh, Michael uh, uh, Cromie, yes, yep. came in second. Charlie Korea in third. And again, there wasn't very many of those, but those were exciting, though. They're always exciting. There was side-by-side si -side racing and so much competition with the Dwarf Main and the Mini Stocks, of course. Go to that right now. Kyle Cheney took the win for the Mini Stock Dash. Came back and took the Main Event win. And even though, even though it was, it was not really, I couldn't say by default, but even though it was it, the, all the other, the other cars, uh, this is mini still stock. Still finished every lap. You get the mini stock right there. Yeah, F finished every single That's lap, good. and then all the other. You know, he was the only obviously the only car left after yeah, well, the blow up. his fault. Nope, he raced it really well. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yep. The four bangers dash. Colin Nilsson. Here you go, the number twenty. Colin Nilsson took the four banger win. Bob Brown was right up there yeah, in second was. spot. I mean, he really gave Colin a run for his money. What an awesome race the the four bangers and the four banger. Colin Nilsson came back and won the main. So let's get on to our crash of the week right now. We have to have a little video up there promo. So the video promo, crash of the week, coming up next. I had an excellent view of this. I was about 40 feet behind him. Right. <laughs> it was very exciting. It was really Well, there you see it right there. We'll okay. talk you through it. There he is. See? Whoa, there he goes. Yeah. Up on his end. I'm so glad he was okay. Took that tire. I mean, that, that, that we saw how the front tire came up. Yep. I mean, no contact at all on his own. Sometimes, it, unfortunately, it happens. Yes, it does. And I want to thank the video for uh, providing what...
Providing us with that was Racing Edge Video Productions. I want to give a big thanks to Fred Adams, 408-528-9029, the best tool Thank you'll you, ever Fred. buy. Thank you, Fred. Check him out at racingedgevideo.net. He was there this past weekend above, above all of us in the announcer's booth, and I'm, I'm getting all the action shots. So big thanks to him. He's been doing it for years and years and Yes, years. he has. Yes, he has. Well, in just a little bit, we can talk about it now. We're, we're going to have the call here in just a little bit. Um, and just a little bit, we're going to hear from uh, um, we'll hear from Chase Johnson here in about a minute. Right. But I want to talk about we're going to actually um, the Tulsa shootout and how that went. Speaking of speaking of Rico Abreu, Rico Abreu actually took the B feature main chili bowl. The chili bowl. Chili bowl. Yeah, sorry, the chili bowl. Yes, yeah, it, it's confusing sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The chili bowl took the took the chili bowl. The Lucas Oil feature, fifty five laps. of Brian Clausen has off to Brian Clausen for taking the win. Just uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, the Tulsa Shootout is for six hundred micros, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, chili yes. bowl is for yeah. midgets. Yes. To clarify the difference there. Go ahead, Ace. Yes. Yeah. Back on that. So hopefully we'll hear from him in a minute to find out how that went. But anyway, the feature, the feature main, Brian Clausen, Kevin Swindle. There's another name. Swindell. Uh, Swindell. Yes, of course. Number three. Yep. Christopher Bell. Number four. Alex Bright were brought up. The one with the top five. Double D. Dave Darling. <laughs> yes, and of course, and I'm coming in. Old, at, uh, old guys. Eleven. Not bad. Eleventh. <laughs> uh, Rico Abreu. Oh. And there we go. Hello. You're on the air with a checkered flag. Hey guys, Rico. All right. Who is it? Chase. Oh, Chase. Oh, okay. Chase Johnson. Thanks Chase for calling Johnson. in. Sorry about that, man. I was, it was hard to under Chase, thanks for calling in, man. And uh, wanted to talk to you about the uh, the Tulsa shootout and, uh, of course, the uh, Chili Bowl. The Chili Bowl. How did all that go for you, man? Oh, it was a blast. We, uh, we actually just got home uh, last night, and um, I've just been catching up on my sleep tonight. And um, <laughs> Chili Bowl right. was a blast. We... Um, we had some bad luck, but we were able to um, come back. And um, when we came back a little, um, we made it up to the E Main on Saturday night. So it, it was a it was a good time, good learning experience, and um, it was really good for my my first time in the midget. <laughs> right on. Oh, it was your first time in the midget. So how how was that experience for you, for being your first time? Uh, it was crazy. It was something. Um, Something way different than I was expecting. Um, running through sixties all year, um, it's something. It's something way different. And um, going to hop in the midget just for this race was a little nerve wracking. But um, after I got out there, it was all fine. But um, it's just you have to drive it so different. And it's you got to drive it way different than anything I've ever drove before. Yeah. Uh, but running running the micro sprints and running for Kaiser Racing. A couple, oh, wow. a couple weeks at the end of the season, um, that helped out a ton. Yes, and, yes. Um, those were actually quite similar to a midget, so yep. it was a good experience. And um, I just really hope we can do some more midget shows. Those things were it was a, it was a blast. Yeah, I got I could tell you were really excited. And hey, I, I want to give you a huge shout out for what. Uh, well, for I want to talk to you about your the three on the racing team, the CWR racing team, is it? Yes, Colwood Racing. Yes, yes. So talk to us about the racing team, and then of course uh, tell us about your experience. You got to go to the local, uh, the local uh, hospital there, and that was we showed a video at the top of the hour. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Was something really cool. Um, the whole Coolwood racing team, me and Cole and um, Dom, we went to uh, the St. Francis Children's Hospital and with the Big Owl Motorsports Foundation, and we spent about two and a half hours hanging out at the hospital and um, going around to different rooms and Aww. hanging out with um, with a whole bunch of kids. So that was really neat. And we got to talk to them for about 15, 20 minutes. And um, Cole actually had shirts made up um, from Tommy Hall at Connected Clothing. Yeah. And um, they were actually yeah. just like a blank white t-shirt and they actually got to color on a blank um, race car. So oh, isn't that, isn't that nice? And um, I gave them some hero cards, and um, it was really cool just to, wow. to be there and hang out with them. And, um, and brighten their day, and yeah, and you know, and, and it's such a nice thing, you guys, that you brighten their day, and, and for that short amount of time, you got to take their mind off of what they were going through, and that was a really awesome thing, man. 
Exactly. They brightened our day mostly. I think yep, they yeah. brightened our day more than we brightened theirs. Yep. Yes, yeah, so that, that was that one. Works. That was one happy little girl there we saw in that, that boy that they got to interview. So you could tell that they were really happy, and uh, that was just an awesome thing that you guys did. Yeah, and then the day after that, we also um, all three of us competed in the kickball game. Oh, you did! Uh, oh, wow! So that so that was also something neat that we got to do. So we got to play kickball with some kids that were gone through cancer, and um, right. we actually they actually ended up raising I think um, twenty one thousand dollars. That's what wow. I heard. Wow! Um, yes, a little bit over twenty one grand. But it was it was really cool, I and mean, it was a big success for the Kick It Foundation. Good right. job, man. Right on, man. I man, that, that's so appreciated. It's uh, let let's get to the uh, always a champion. How are you doing? And always a, always a champion right now. I'm following up on you and of course um, our uh, other guy that we're following. So how are you doing? I'm always a champion right now. Um, right now we're doing all right. Um, I can't tell how many votes we got or anything. The only thing I can tell is where we're sitting with most viewed. So. Um, Right now, we're sitting on the third page of Most Viewed. Right. So, um, we fell back a little, but I don't know, but that is just Most Viewed. So we could be first, we could be last. I don't really know on how many votes we got. But um, I know we got a lot of people voting each and every day. So. And there's the address up on the screen right now for those of you. Vote, vote, vote. Yep. Vote for these guys, yep. and of course, uh, our other, our, our East Coast, uh, our East Coast friend too, Cody Connor. Cody Connor is also in the running. We've had yep. him on the show, so uh, be sure to get your votes in for these guys. It's well, it's well deserved. And how many up to three can win? Fifty. Oh, fifty. Up to fifty. But who? Um, there's how many it, can win the top? Is that one? right, Chase? Is it actually fifty that are in the running, Chase? Um, fifteen. Uh, there's actually fifteen. 15. I was like, fifteen. Fifteen. Grand, and then fifteen other people get five thousand dollars. Gotcha. And then um, you can also. It's not like you could just vote for me, or you could just vote for the other guy. You can actually vote for both of us. Fantastic. And, uh, right on. Because you can vote once a day for as many people as you would like. Yes, and get in, get get these votes in because these kids that are that are up for this is well deserved, and of course the money is is for spon is is in sponsorship, right? Is that what this money's for? Yes, it's for sponsorship. Right. Fantastic. All right, Chase. It's always great to hear from you. Get your votes in, folks. They're on the screen right now. Always a champion, and of course uh, to also search Cody Connor. You can find him also. So get your votes in, and uh, yeah, let's get these kids. Uh, they yeah. deserve a sponsor. Put your vote in now. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Nate, sure. no problem. Thanks for calling in, man. Anybody, a... anybody you want to oh. thank or shout out to, especially Absolutely. tonight? Sponsors? Yeah, I just want to send a, a big um, thank you to Colwood Racing and everyone involved. It was it was a great trip and a great chili bowl, and it was, um, it was my first, and um, hopefully more to come. And um, I just can't thank everyone from the crew to everyone involved and then from everyone involved that had to stay back home and work. And... Um, it was just great. So I just want to thank them very much, and uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. Hey, sure. no problem. Actually, too, before you let you go, we actually got we I actually uh, um, we actually followed you guys a little bit, and then gave updates at Dixon for you. So very cool. Yeah, yep. thank you guys very much. All right. Yep. Hey, no problem. It's always great to hear from you, man. You have a great night. All right. You too. All right. See you in Bye. the dirt. Yeah. See you in the dirt. All right. Bye. Right. right on, man. It's always great to hear from him, and we're gonna get get back. Get back to the recap and, of course, our upcoming upcoming races. Of course, the Rico Abra, the B-Main, had talked about that. Kyle Larson, the 71K, spot number two, right in behind Rico Abreu. Kyle yep. Larson, you know, those two are actually, actually really good friends. Larson and Abreu, you can, you can find them hanging out at the track together. So, um, Local boys doing good. Yes, local boys. Darren Pittman, uh, spot number four, number five, Jerry Coons. So that takes care of that. I want to talk about the upcoming races that we have. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so next weekend, Ukiah Speedway. Not too far from here. Head on over to Ukiah and see the kids in action. The suit racing super, I would call them the future racing superstars. That would be Outlaw Carts. Yes, that will, yes, that's right, Outlaw Carts. The Winter Five, Series. Winter Series shared with Dixon Speedway. 500s will be there. 250s, beginner box, and a box stock. Drivers mini get 315. Racing kicks off at 4 o'clock. Going to go with February, of course. I want to talk about the banquet. And I'm understanding the 2013 banquet at Dixon Speedway this Friday 
the ex uh, deadline was supposed to be last Friday. Now, yeah. Shalane has actually done a very nice thing, and she's uh, extended it to Friday the 24th. So, yeah, February 1st, 20, 2014, 3 p.m., located at the Martinez Plumbers Hall at 1308 Roman Way in Martinez, California. Sign up. We need more sign up for people to come and check it out and watch us crown these champ champions, many who have had on the show. Yes. Watch us crown the champions. Champions, of course, are free, $20 per person. And of course, there'll be food, drinks, a raffle, and a silent and a silent auction. And you said they were needing more things for the auction. Was that correct? We can use more raffle prizes and more auction prizes. Sweet. Absolutely. So if there's businesses watching, we do, we, they, they can use more of those. And it's all part of the all part of crowning these youngsters and and uh, no more of that used duct product. tape though. We got enough of that used duct. Oh tape. yeah, I got enough used duct tape. All right. And of course, for more information, visit www.dixonspeedway.net. Again, it's been extended to Friday. The deadline. You can check out the website to get one of these forms. And if you come to Dixon, well, actually, no, because the deadline's Friday. Right. So, yeah. So you got to get it before Friday, before this Friday, the 24th, if you want to come come watch us crown the champions. Again, I want to thank all of our sponsors, Mant Manticorp, Tax and Accounting. Manticorp, check them out at manticorpusa.com. Up on the screen is the number, of course. Don't get frazzled by taxes. They can help you. They can help ease your mind. Of course, Yaya's Coffee House in the Burns Valley Mall near the grocery outlet. A great family, uh, great family atmosphere. Uh, go in there. Uh, Shelby would be happy to get you whatever drink you like. It's the stopping grounds. Yes, my stopping grounds. You can find me there on on any, on any given time, also. And of course, never needed, never never had the need for it. But maybe you folks are out there, and someone might get bro someone might break down. And they're wondering, how am I going to get home? Well, always towing can pick you up. Don't get stranded. 707-995-5000. So let's talk about who we're going to have on next week. Get to that part of my notes here. Of course, we're going to have the all-famous Harley Aguilera. Yeah, Speaking Harley. of 600 racer, Harley Aguilera will be on the show. Yep. I don't know if he'll be calling in or live. I'd like to get him. I'd like to get his face in there and get him live. Okay. He, he, he's one, uh, one great guy, one yes, funny. Yes. Yeah, he's a great kid. He's, he's funny, too. I, I enjoy joking with him and teasing him at the racetrack. I like to give him a little rib every now and then on the... Yeah, and he's a... He's well, a, ask him how he was beat by the seven-year-old. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully that won't strike a nerve but <laughs> <laughs> at the racetrack. He's a generous young man. He's, mm. he's helped people yeah. and, and just been a nice guy, so we've been glad to know him. Right. So we'll get him here. And right. director of marketing for Max Speed Thunder... TV reality show. Edward Heinz will be on the show. Edward Heinz will be on here, so we're going to get some, give them some national attention. Also, drivers for Max Speed, reminding you that Troy Edwards and David Toller, they'll be actually they're in the running. They're going to be actually on the reality show. They're going to be on our show for February third, uh, right after Sierra Furia. So we're going to get some national attention and going to try to get, give them some West Coast attention because Edward Heinz is actually a director in, of marketing at. Uh, um, Oh man, I'm gonna kill myself for, for for forgetting. But he's got it on on Facebook. Um, he's a he's a director of, of marketing for New Generation Motorsports. Gotcha. I've been on the show before, and he's he's done so much for. Speaking of a guy who's done stuff for the kids and for families, he's got a um, Rashi. He's got a boy who he's, he was working with has racing and racing with autism. Who has autism? We've had him on the show, and Edward Heinz is really doing things uh, for the racing business, and he's actually. Um, uh, got to work with some of the biggest names in the racing industry. So he'll be on our show again for the second time. It'll be great to hear from him. And of course, uh, for Troy Edwards and David Toller on February 3rd. Well, okay. folks, we have, we're gonna, I guess we can go out with the, last, with the last video that we have, and that is for June 15th for Ryan Robinson. And we'll show that video for all of it from all of us here at the Checkered Flag, myself, Shannon Ace Naylor. Hi, and Mom. Yeah, hi, Mom. Oh, and, uh, yeah, man, can I give me your name? <laughs> I'm Driver Dave Driver Mitchell. Dave Mitchell. And, again, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the Kaiser family. And we are out. Watch us same time, same place right here. Peace.